Hello everybody, Andrea Turowski here with Dental L Tutoring. In this video, I want to go through a mock exam with you because everybody seems to love the mock exams, which makes total sense because they are awesome. And I find that there's not always enough hours in the day to go through them with my students. So I figured this way, if I do a, um, a video, then everybody can kind of see it and then watch it on their own time. So let me just share my screen here. I have a couple things opened up. Let me figure out, there we go. So can everybody see my screen okay? Now I will put my video in the corner here so then that way you can mainly see the mock exam because I know it's a little bit small. I tried to zoom in, but this is kind of the biggest I could do, but um, I will help you guys with that anyway. I will read the question and the answer for you. You should be able to see the x-rays or the images that I'm going to show you quite easily um, because I find that this is an area that students um, struggle with a little bit is looking at an x-ray and deciding what's wrong with the x-ray and then how to fix it. Because for a dental hygiene student and a dental assisting student, you need to take good x-rays. If you don't take good x-rays, you will not last in a dental office long because if you have to constantly retake them, that's not a good thing. If you have to ask for help to have somebody retake them for you, that's not a good thing either. But it does take time to learn. So so please do not think that they're expecting you to be perfect at the x-rays right away because they're not. If you are perfect right away, that is pretty amazing and that never happens. But no office is expecting that from you. Now, even um, it depends if you have the sensors in your office or the digital um, phosphoric plates. They are a little bit different. Um, the digital um, phosphoric plates are a lot thinner and are like the old type of film that we used to use. In my opinion, they're a lot easier to work with because it's similar to the old film we used to um, use and you probably learned that in school. Um, and then you just have to put them on a um, ring kit holder or the bite wing tabs, um, the bisecting technique, whatever works for you. But then on the opposite uh, side of things, you have the digital sensors, which are thicker, but as soon as you take the x-ray, you can see it on the computer almost right away. So that's a nice thing to have. And with the sensors, you have a cord that you have to work with too. And that takes some time to get used to because you have to always make sure the cord's outside the mouth and not in the way of what you're trying to take an x-ray of. So I have used both systems and with the sensor, um, it took me a little bit longer to learn how to use it because you actually have to angle the film closer to the middle of the mouth even more so. Um, and you have to angle it in a certain way to keep the cord out of the way. So there's a knack to both systems, but don't feel like you have to be perfect at it right away. Okay, anyway, so let's go through some questions. So can everybody see question 32? So the question is, what is the following image um, showing? Now, I could actually make this bigger. I didn't think to just make the text larger. There we go. So what is this image um, showing? And the examples are A, elongation, B, foreshortening, C, tilted occlusal plane, or D, overexposure. So what is this image showing? And I'll make that larger, actually. Here we go. So A, elongation, B, foreshortening, C, tilted occlusal plane, or D, overexposure. What do you guys think? Now, if you need to think about that for a second, please pause the video because I will talk about the answer now. Okay, so the answer is tilted occlusal plane, so that's C. Now, A is not the answer, um, and some people do think it is A, but that's not the answer because... Um, it's just not the answer. Um, let me try to think of a better explanation for you. Um, if the teeth looked either too long or too short, you would be able to tell. This tooth appears to have almost a shorter root than it should, and it's even, um, the root is kind of off to the side a little bit, 
but that doesn't mean that the tooth is too short. And these may appear to have slightly longer roots, but not really. Um, I hope I have an example in here of a tooth that looks too long or too short because it's a lot more obvious than this. So that's why the correct answer is the tilted occlusal plane because um, when you start taking x-rays more often, you will be able to tell quite quickly what's a good x-ray and what's a bad one. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad one, but obviously when they put it in the patient's mouth, it was tilted a little bit because it just simply looks tilted. Um, the more x-rays you look at, it will become a lot easier to tell if it's tilted or, or um, not, if it's overexposed or, or not. So it does take some practice, but that is why I am going through the video with you. Um, if you have any questions though about the right answer here, um, please make sure to add in a comment and, and I will be happy to help. So okay, but let's move on to the next one. So and I'll make this larger for you guys too. So what is wrong with the following image here? So we're looking at this one right here. So the answers are, and I'll make this larger as well, is it A, overlap, B, too many amalgams, C, the curve of speed, or D, that the sinus is not shown? Now, what was the question again? So let me just repeat it. It is, what is wrong with the following image? Now, first and foremost, you have to think, I'm not asking you what's in the image, but I am asking you what is wrong with the image. Because as you look at these answers, you may be saying, well, there are a lot of amalgams because you can see the, the um, amalgams from the white areas he, um, here. One, two, three, four. Is that a lot of amalgams? Well, yes, but is that wrong with the image? No. Um, the curve of speed. Well, that is simply a landmark. Is that something wrong with the image? No. And then the next one, D, is um, that the sinus is not shown. Now, it's quite obvious that in this image, it is a bite wing. Do we normally see the sinus in a bite wing? No. So having the sinus not be there is not a bad thing because it's not supposed to be there. If you saw a sinus in the bite wing, it means you can't see the lower teeth. And then that's not a bite wing, that's, that is a periapical like this one here, where if you're taking a periapical on the top, um, especially in the sinus area, you will be able to see the sinus because it's on the top. But in this x-ray here, that's not a problem because you don't have to see the sinus in a bite wing. So process of elimination, the correct answer is A, overlap. So overlap is are these areas here. And that's the most common error in the bite wing x-rays is when students or new dental assistants or new dental hygienists don't know how to angle that tube head properly, okay? And I am the worst when I am taking uh, bite wings, which is why I don't use the tab. I use the RIN holder because that just sort of shows me where I do have to angle the tube head. So it depends on what you like to use, but I knew early on that I couldn't use the tabs properly because I would get overlap all the time. And when you have overlap, right, you can't see in between the teeth. So that's why it's not a good thing. Um, if there's any questions about that, please make sure to comment below. Let's do one more here. Okay, so what is wrong with this image? Hmm, what do you guys think? What is wrong with this image right here? So I made it larger for you. Um, and let me make the answers larger too. Sorry that it's so tiny. Um, and if you're wondering, these are part of the 2016 um, dental assisting mock exam package. So if you're part of the board exam prep academy, you do have this, or it's actually on sale at the moment. It's normally $47, and for this week it's on sale for $6. So if you are interested 
in, in learning more, um, then uh, feel free to purchase that. Um, the answers are at the end of the package, of course. Um, but okay, sorry, let me just, I wanted to make this bigger and why isn't it letting me, oh, because I was clicking on the wrong thing here. Okay, let's make this larger. Okay, so this image right here. So what is wrong with this image? The answers are A, that the fixer spots are splashed onto the film, or B, over here, that the developer spots are splashed onto the film, C, there is static on the film, or D, that light exposed, um, there is light exposed in the areas where the spots are. So what do you think? And feel free to pause the video if you need to think about it. So what is this? Now, if you've been studying for a while, your answers are probably either A, the fixer spots, or B, the developer spots. So if you've been studying for a while, you should know that, um, because static looks completely different. And if light was exposed, that would also look completely different, but I will share that in another video. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think it is the fixer spots or the developer spots? So the answer is A, the fixer spots, because if it was B, the developer spots, the spots are a lot darker, so like kind of a brown or black color. And how I would uh, remember this when I was a student is I would think if the spots were dark, it would be the a developer spot. So D for dark, D for developer. That's how I sort of thought about it. Because this, um, if you're taking the board exam soon, this is a very common question because a lot of students get this question mixed up because they see spots and they know it's either the fixer or developer, but then they think, oh shoot, is it the fixer or the developer spots? I can't remember. So think if the spots are dark, it is D for developer or if the spots are light, it is the fixer spots. So I hope that you guys did well with those questions. If you need help, please let me know. Um, if you're a student in the Board Exam Prep Academy, you do have this. Even the dental, um, the dental hygiene students have this too. I know it's part of the Dental Assisting Mock Exam Package, but the dental hygiene students have this also because this is an excellent mock exam because as you can see, there are lots of x-rays and those are common questions that students do have. So let me just stop sharing my screen here for a moment. Okay, so if you guys need anything, please let me know. I, I, um, I do hope that that helped. Um, and stay tuned for the next video where I will be going over some more mock exam questions for you. See you later.